zoning appeals order. I'd like to welcome everyone in the audience to tonight's meeting. Uh, we are all, um, all the members of the board are all volunteers and we serve three year terms. Then there's, the terms are staggered. Now, with that being said, I am now, based on the power vested in me, going to turn the meeting over to uh, Vice Chairman uh, Jason Canvasser. You change the name. <laughs> Can do one. No, I'm okay. okay. Oh, no, Mike, Mike's got it. Yeah. Thank you. Good evening and welcome. Um, as Mr. Lilly said, uh, this is the regular monthly meeting of the BZA. BZA members or volunteers will receive no compensation. We are appointed by the City Commission for staggered three-year terms. Under uh, state statutes, the BZA hears three types of appeals, dimensional or non-use variance, and we have one of those tonight. Um, in a dimensional or non-use variance, uh, the appellant must show a practical difficulty uh, complying with the dimensional requirements of the ordinance. It requires four affirmative votes. Um, the other two are use variances and appeals of interpretation of rulings of the building official or other boards <coughs> regarding any provision of the zoning ordinance. We do not have any of those before us tonight. Um, our procedure is all comments are to read addressed to the chair. Please wait to be recognized. City staff will make a presentation regarding the appeal and take questions from board members. And then the appellant will be invited to present uh, his or her case. We ask that only one person uh, address the board. Uh, we may grant some exceptions for technical um, support. Uh, after that, members of the public are invited to come forward, identify themselves, and provide their comments to the board. We will then close the public hearing and um, the members of the board can make a motion and we can act upon those motions. In all cases, this is not a popularity contest. Granting or denying a variance is based substantially on the appellant meeting his or her burden of proof. Um, with that being said, can the secretary please call roll of the board members? Jason Kibbiser? Here. Charles Lilly? Here. Eric Morganoff? Here. Kevin Hart? Here. John Miller? Here. Francis Rodriguez? Here. Ron Reddy? Richard Lilly? Here. Okay. Um, 528 Park, um, Appeal 1926 was published for tonight, and just in case anybody's here, that is being postponed uh, to next month. Is, is anybody here on that? Okay, is anybody here for 633 Vinewood, uh, Appeal 1927? Okay. All right, uh, Mr. Johnson, any additional correspondence for the board? There's not. All right, board members, before you are the minutes of the last regularly scheduled meeting, do we have any corrections? Uh, Mr. Lowe. Um, yeah, it has me. The right spelling, Mr. Lowe. <laughs> um, <laughs> the minutes have me listed as an alternate member, and I'm now a permanent member. Okay. And was at the last meeting. Okay. Mr. Rodriguez. Uh, bottom of page 11, second to bottom paragraph. I think the the motion was seconded by either myself or someone else, but I don't believe you seconded it. Oh, he posted it. <laughs> so I think that needs to be replaced to me. Which page? Uh, page, 11. page 11, second to last paragraph. Motion by Mr. Miller, seconded by it was not Mr. Canvasser. I would agree with that. <laughs> We know who seconded that. I know I did, but yeah, I Francis. Okay, all right. So that should be changed to Mr. to Mr. Fr uh, Rodriguez. Anything else? We have a motion to approve. Motion to approve as amended. Second. All right. Motion to approve and second. Uh, all in favor, signal by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Motion carries. All right, calling appeal 1927 for the property located at 633 Vinewood. Mr. Zilke. Jeff Zilke with the City of Birmingham, here to present case 19-27. 
property known as 633 Vinewood. It's a request of following variance is to construct a first and second floor addition to the existing non-conforming home. Chapter 126, Article 2, Section 2.08 of the Zoning Ordinance requires a minimum front yard setback be the average of the homes within 200 feet in each direction. The required front yard setback is 28.71 feet. The existing and proposed is 24.85 feet. Therefore, a variance of 3.86 feet is being requested. Variance number two, chapter 126, article four, section 4.75A, number one, of the zoning ordinance requires attached garages shall not occupy, occupy more than 50% of the linear building width of the principal residential building that faces the street. The maximum allowed is 50% or 13.10 feet. The existing and proposed is 73.3% or 19.20 feet. Therefore, a variance of 23.3% or 6.10 feet is being requested. Variance number C, chapter 126, article four, section 4.75A, number one of the zoning ordinance requires that attached garages set back a minimum of five feet from the portion of the front facade that is further set back from the front property line. The existing garage is 20.50 feet in front of the proposed furthest front facade, therefore a variance of 25, or sorry, 20.5 feet, therefore a variance of 25.5 feet is being requested. Final variance D, chapter 126, article four, section 4.75A, number two, Oh, the zoning ordinance requires a garage door on an attached garage which faces the street may not exceed nine feet in width. The existing and proposed is 16 feet. Therefore, a variance to maintain the existing 16 foot garage door is being requested. The applicant is proposing to construct a second and first floor addition into the front and also a small addition in the rear which meets the ordinance. The, all the variances are coming to play into the front because the garage sits in front of the furthest portion of the fa facade, uh, the garage door, and that's why they're here today to ask for the variance. The house, the existing home was constructed in 1971. Any questions? Mr. Zuki, when this house was built, did it comply with all the ordinances? As uh, far as my knowledge, yes, because I know there's garages that were set in front of the existing garage houses, and I don't believe that that was uh, an issue back when they were. All right, does the proposed addition on the second story over the garage, does that comply with the front setback requirement? Yes. Okay. Are they tearing down the garage out in front and then rebuilding it, or are they just... They're modifying the roof structure, creating a flat roof instead of the existing pitched roof, which they're touching that non-conforming that sits in front of that. That's uh, well, the garage is being adjusted in that point, so they're touching that front wall of the garage. So um, the all these variances are subject to what's already existing. The, the, is it true that what's being added actually does it require any kind of a variance? No, what's being added and being proposed, no, there's no variance, everything meets it. It's just trying to conform with what's what, existing. What's, what's existing is causing right. this problem, okay. And as far as the porch and everything that complies? Yes, the one way it could be, they set the addition in the porch back a little bit where the existing portion of the front facade in this back corner that held this in a little bit. So that's where the existing front facade is the furthest portion um, and that's where that 20 25.5 foot is okay. being asked for. Mr. Morgan Roth. So uh, with the addition of the new porch which appears to be more than five feet in front of the garage is it because of the porch it doesn't compensate for the requirement of the five foot main facade being f five feet further ahead of the garage? No, because porches can project into the required front yard. Right. It's just this portion of the existing house that's sticking out, you know, further. It's not an allowable projection, therefore that's the furthest portion. There is a mudroom that's pulled up to the front that meets the front yard setback, but then with having this little tail that's sticking out, that's the furthest portion of it. Uh, so it's not where the front door is. So if you pull the front door out to the existing porch they're proposing, it wouldn't remedy anything. 
No, correct. Okay. And then with regard to the doors, if or is it feasible to put in two eight foot doors on that existing garage facade? <coughs> It would be very tight and narrow to get the uh, eight inches in between. Um, eight foot doors would still be kind of tight. I mean, the cars today, you know, pretty much pretty tight with an eight foot door. So, in in current homes that are approved, typically have nine foot minimum, or do, do we do? Yeah, some most of them I've seen are nine foot. Uh, nine foot. Thank you. It's hard. Yes. Um, Jeff, I know you might have already said this. If, if if the roof of the existing garage remained in place, we wouldn't even be reviewing this, right? It would still be here because the porch still is further back. It would be lessened. It wouldn't be any work in the front yard portion of variance ones that set in back and are set in front of the required front yard. That would be non-touched. Um, the five-foot portion set behind the furthest portion of the front facade would still be an issue. Mm -hmm. um, and same with the 16-foot garage door. Okay, thank you. Mr. Miller. Yeah, it seems uh, A, B, and C, as you've stated, really relate to the, the way the existing house is situated on the lot. But the question with, with D, they're replacing the garage door. <coughs> the existing garage door with another garage door that's the same size. Why does that require them to get a variance? I know once they're changing it, it's still modifying it. So therefore it's kind of putting it, since it's out in the front, since they're modifying it, I think that's why it's being asked since it is being changed being replaced where therefore they're not changing it to a nine foot door or an eight foot and they're still asking just maintain the 16 foot door okay, but hypothetically if, if they weren't doing anything else to the house but they just needed a new garage door and we're going to replace the existing one they wouldn't need a, a variance no i don't think so if they're okay. just requ request or replacing existing like you just described they wouldn't but because of the addition and renovation that's proposed all around the existing non-conforming garage, it's so that necessary very drags it with the others. Okay, yes. thank you. You're welcome. Um, Mr. Zilke, is, is there a way to put that garage in the back of the property? What kind of, I guess, what kind of variances would they need if, if they were gonna do that, if any? It would be pretty tight to get back there, and my understanding that yard slips back a little bit. I don't really have that answer. Okay. We can ask the applicant as well. Okay. Does anybody else have any questions? All right. Thank you. Who wants to present for the uh, appellant? Hello, I'm Valerie Schinkel. I'm here with my husband, Doug Schinkel, and our contractor, Mauro. Can answer any of the technical questions if you guys have them. So this is our house, 633 Vinewood. We purchased it a couple years ago in 2016, and from the first time we saw it, we fell in love with it. An architect lived there for 20 years before us, him and his wife. And for those 20 years, he pretty much designed every aspect of that house down to, like, the cabinet doorknobs the inside and outside to make this crazy unique living space that really fit us and we love it and there's just a ton of really cool design elements in it. The only thing that's not working for us right now is that it's really on the top floor it's really just a one bedroom master suite. So we're requesting this variance because we're looking to add two additional bedrooms on top. We need the space because we have people from out of town who come to see us I'm from Indiana and my family comes to see us. They don't really have a bedroom to stay in and we're also looking for additional bedrooms for a growing family sometime in the hopefully soon future. We've looked at a lot of different design elements. Uh, we've looked at a couple different plans and this one is really the most logical for us for a number of reasons. And like they said, like Jeff said, we know that um, everything that we want to add, it does exist, does conform with the requirements, but because it's on top of the garage, that's why we need this. 
So I guess we could just do like a quick tour of the house for the inside if you, or from the outside, sorry, from the outside. Really what you see now is just that huge garage door and we understand that's like what is not wanted in Birmingham anymore. And what we want to do is really just take off the shed roof and then build that addition on top with the two extra bedrooms and bring out a foyer and the porch, like Jeff explained. And those should all conform with the height and setback requirements. Um, and as you can see from the picture, the proposed picture, it really is a big improvement on what the house looks like from the front. You don't notice the garage as much, especially if you had a, one of those modern glass door garages. It looks a lot better that way. So the interior, when you walk into our house right now on the bottom floor, we really just have, we you have a study, a kitchen, and our family room. And our family room, we're just requesting to bring it out the full width of the house. For the rest of the house, we can fit a dining room table in there right now, which we don't have room for. So our kitchen island is getting a lot of use. And then upstairs, is the really unique portion. So you walk up the stairs and we have a small sitting area, a walk-in closet, and then our master suite and bathroom. But the way this house is designed is that the top floor is really a modern loft concept. There's, from when you walk up the stairs, there's no doors anywhere. It's just a loft, except for where the toilets are, of course. So, and there's some really, really cool design elements within that loft. The bathroom is kind of mixed with the bedroom and it's just really unique and it makes the house as special as it is from the architect who planned that. So why we're proposing the two bedrooms in the front is so we can have the minimal impact to the design as it is and it's a logical flow going up the stairs and going on to the addition. Uh, so we do understand the intent of the zoning ordinance. You don't want the garages out in front like that. And like I said, I think we're working with an existing condition and we really are just trying to improve upon it. Um, that being said, we live on Vinewood and it is a relatively short street for Birmingham. And as you can see, a lot of our neighbors have similar circumstances and they do have that living space above that we are requesting now. So we have, we've spent a lot of time trying to study and like figure out how we can make this house work for us because we really love it and we really wanna add these bedrooms and this proposal has no adverse effects on any of our neighbors. We've talked to many of them. We have their signatures and their support. And we really think that this design is what works best for us. Um, I think we have a list of reasons why it's reasonable to grant us this variance, but we really just hope that we have your support in this. Any questions, Mr. Lowell? All right, you've submitted in your drawing, so you, you got option A, which is the one you want, yes. and then you submitted option B and option C, which indicate that you could, and in B, you could build the addition behind the house, correct? Right, that was and, an option. And option C, you could put a, a garage in the back and have a driveway in there. So there are ways that you could comply with the ordinance without having to get a variance. Right. We submitted those just to prove that we really took the time um, and talked to our architect and went through a lot of these options just to really try to figure out what worked for us. Um, there's a variety of reasons why those aren't the best options. Um, the one where you build on to the back, we would just build over the family room in the back. Right now the family room, it's pretty small as it is. It's very small. We literally have a couch and that's it. So, and the the roof is sloped, which makes it seem a little bigger. To build onto that, we would have to flatten that roof for the first floor. And then also our whole upstairs would be pretty much demolished and reconfigured. There's, unless we wanted to walk through the master suite to get to the additional bedrooms. And that, like I said, the upstairs, the design that he put into it and how it's all one big master suite is really what makes this house so special and why we love it so much and we really did not, do not want to lose that part of it. Um, for the garage in the back, we also wanted to just show that we had thought of that as an option, but like you said, getting in a driveway back there be really tight. Um, I know that a lot of houses in Birmingham do have their garages in their backyards, so I hate to make the enjoying our backyard case, but we really do, we love our backyard, and we have a ton of landscaping back there. We have a very mature tree that both us and our neighbor enjoy, and we wouldn't want to lose that. And from what I understand, we do have gradation issues. We would also be, the 
work that would go on the front, as I understand, we would have to bring the garage back and make that into an additional living space, which is just additional work in space and commitment that we aren't really looking for, that's not necessary for us. Uh, what we're proposing is already a, a really big commitment for us, and that option um, could be slightly outside of our outside of our means to complete. Okay, I mean, you're, 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 you're bringing up financial issues, and but that's not, financial issues are not a... No, no, I understand <coughs> that, yeah, it's just the whole, the, we would have to reconfigure our downstairs right now, the way the kitchen and the living room is set up. We don't have, everything is sliding doors and all connected. If we move the garage into the back, we would have to basically reconfigure not only our upstairs for adding the for adding the bedrooms, but we would also have to reconfigure the whole downstairs, how we would access the house, where the doors were, things like that. In the kitchen, he put um, he put a lot. I think the kitchen won when he first built it in like 2002, I believe it won an award for something for the design of it. It's really cool. Mr. <laughs> Sir. Yes, um, on the, um, just uh, for option C, um, your existing survey shows a deck on the west side. That would have to be removed, wouldn't it, to put a uh, driveway on? Yes, so yeah. So that would have to that, be gone. Yeah, that deck would go, and then the next biggest thing would be, um, we have this really, really big mature tree, and the, yeah, and the deck would also go. And right there, that would that's an also an issue with our kitchen, because that whole wall right there, where our kitchen is, is all sliding doors, sliding glass doors, so I'm not sure how, I guess I'm not, I'm, I'm not exactly sure how we would make that work without renovating the whole kitchen. Anyone else? Mr. Morgan Roth. Did you explore a scenario where you did a garage, which is what I have on my home, that wasn't front entry, but you took a turn and then went straight into the garage in the back, back corner? That makes sense. So instead of going straight into the garage, you would go behind your house, turn left, and go into the garage directly. Was that an option you explored? I'm not. I'm not sure if I understand how that would how that would work. So instead yeah. of coming straight down into the garage, okay. the garage would be on this corner, right? And you would come in and turn into it. Is that something you explored in terms of the interference of the deck and things like that? We didn't explore that, but I, we would still lose that deck right there, and we would still have the issues with all the entryways. The only entryways we have on that first floor are all sliding glass doors, and that would all have to be reconfigured. Okay, thanks. So I, I have a question for you. So you mentioned a couple times that the ordinance has been changed, and this house would not be built today in, in Birmingham because of the changes <laughs> to the ordinance. You can't have a front-facing um, house. This is what we call a pre-existing non-conforming structure. Um, I, I, well, a couple of questions. So when, when did you first move into this house? We bought it in 2016, okay. a couple of years ago. Okay. And when you bought it, did you know it was non-conforming? We did not know that. Okay. So, generally speaking, we try to avoid increasing pre-existing non-conforming structures. And there are, as you mentioned also, there's a number of houses that look like this in the area. Um, and we need to look at these on a case-by-case -case basis, and part of what we look at is mediation. Um, or, or mitigation. Um, Tell us a little bit about what you have done in terms of your design to mitigate the request that's that's being sought today. So to try to come in compliance with the zoning ordinance, um, I think honestly you can just look at the proposed picture, and I know the zoning ordinance attempt is to not have these garages sticking out, so that's the only thing that people see from the street or sidewalk when they're going by. And I I really think that when I showed all this picture, this picture to our neighbors and by bringing that living space forward, though we're not changing or fixing the non-conforming garage from the front facing part, it really looks like it's more conforming to the ordinance than it was 
before. Does that answer your question? I'm not sure I understood. Well, that. I mean, a little bit. I mean, you know, I correct me if I'm wrong, but the new addition doesn't come all the way out to the no. It, garage, stop, it stops where the setback requirement is. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, that's the kind of stuff I'm, I'm, I'm right. Yeah. No, trying so to understand what was. And if you want to bring up your architect, um, you know, those are the kind of things that I think are yeah, important. Yes, so we made understand. sure that all of the additions that we want to make, uh, the porch and the addition of the two bedrooms, you can see, like, oh, sorry, this little space right here, that's the non conforming space. So the addition, we only brought it forward to the setback as far as it could go. Did you look into whether or not you could have two separate garage doors? Yes, we talked to our architect, and because that is a, I'm not sure, I can't remember exactly how long that is, but if we tried to split that in two with the space between, we didn't think that we would be able to fit our two cars in there. Okay. All right. Uh, Mr. Hart. Um, this might be a question for Bruce, but uh, <laughs> I, I think you might know the answer. Um, bringing the living space forward to the edge of the garage within the setback allowability yeah. is actually decreasing the existing non-conformity. So this plan is actually making the existing house more, more nearer to conformance. Is that is that your impression? That or? is my impression. Okay. And, and it looks would a that lot uh, Bruce would you concur with that? I mean that that it condition definitely gives the appearance of that, but well, no, but it, it's actually before it was ten feet back. Now it's almost it's almost closer to being five foot in front. It's a lot it's a lot closer to being in conformance coming forward the, than the, it would that's be. That's correct, but the, the the jog that's still there that Jeff pointed out, right? You know that's <laughs> technically where we still have to measure the portion of the front facade for the setback from the okay. prior. All right, yeah, I understand. Isn't this a situation where they're, they're not increasing the nonconformity? Because what is nonconforming is not changing. They, what, and what they're building conforms to the ordinance. So it's not, you're not decreasing the nonconformity, you're just not increasing. Understood. Okay. I forgot about that measurement from the, the existing mm -hmm. living space. But. Anybody else? All right, thank you. Thank you. Any comments from the public? All right. Uh, board members, what be your pleasure? <clears throat> Mr. Lilly. Uh Mr. Chairman, regard to appeal 19-27. Um, generally, we try not to grant variances where, where no variances are are needed and the same we we don't find the grant variances that increase the uh, a non-conforming property but in this case I think based on the facts presented that uh, the petitioner has shown sufficient information to uh, be granted the variances so therefore I'm moving to grant the variances as advertised uh, I note that the Addition conforms with the ordinance, so they are, for that reason, they are not increasing the uh, nonconformity, and for them to comply with the ordinance would be unduly burdensome. It, it does justice to the neighbors by granting this variance, as it, they are not increasing the nonconformity. Uh, it's not something that self, was self-created when the house was built. It complied with the ordinance, and... Uh, I would tie it to the plans as presented. Support. Supported by Mr. Morganroth. Do we have any comments? I would mirror what Chuck just said. Mr. Rodriguez, excuse me. I'll also support the motion for the reasons stated and just want to also comment that this was one of the best presentations, helpful um, to review, so thank you for that. Mr. Morganroth. Um, I'll support. As I mentioned, um, I agree that the documentation and the different angles and the um, identifiers of all the different potential variations was very beneficial for us and um, wish all of them were presented that way. Um, in some ways, I, I feel like since there are opportunities to do some of the things they wanted, it, it's difficult to look at this and say that um, there aren't, it isn't kind of a gray area. I do agree that pulling that facade forward does 
make the existing non-conforming house seem to be a little bit more up to what the city of Birmingham is looking for um, because you don't have the ability to modify the garage to achieve the uh, maximum nine foot doors. I think that would be unduly burdensome. So for those reasons, I will support the motion. Mr. Miller. Yeah, just I guess a similar comment in that, you know, the way the house sits, it's just it's literally all garage thrust into the front yard. And by adding that that second story uh, uh, on top of it and, and thrusting that, that front porch out beyond the garage, I think it really makes a, a, a really significant difference and uh, brings it into much more harmony with the rest of the neighborhood. Um, so I will also support the motion. Anybody else? Mr. Hart. Yes, um, I will support the motion as well. Um, I think this is a classic example of, of the uh, the law, the letter of the law, and the spirit of the law. I think this meets the, the criteria of the spirit of the law. It's really trying to accomplish what the ordinance is stating and trying to minimize the geometry of, of a massive garage. So, I um, I think it's a, a very uh, good presentation and uh, a very good solution to a problem. I will also support the motion, but I do want to make it very clear that with these pre-existing non-conforming structures we need to not we need to be careful we're not setting a precedent that we're looking at these on a case-by-case -case basis and um, I believe that's what we've done here I believe we have a great presentation that shows very substantial mitigation efforts and substantial efforts to comply with the ordinance in all other respects um, but again I would expect, given the type, given the number of houses in this area, we're going to see these come in front of us more often than not. And I just, again, want to make it clear that we're not setting a precedent, that we need to look at these by on a case-by-case -case basis. But I do support this one. Anybody have anything else to say? All right. Please call the uh, roll. Uh, did we get a second? Yes, Mr. Morgan Roth. Oh, and I'm sorry, the motion is to grant the variances as advertised. Okay. Charles Lilly? Yes. Eric Morgan Roth? Yes. Francis Rodriguez? Yes. Richard Lilly? Yes. Jason Canvasser? Yes. Kevin Hart? Yes. John Miller? Yes. You have your variances. If you could uh, help us <coughs> recycle and collect the papers, we would appreciate that. Thank you so Congratulations. Much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, they're all yours. <laughs> Put them in the green barrel. <laughs> We're saving trees too. I'm not just gonna... Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you once again. Yep. Two. Uh, Mr. Johnson, do we have any other business to discuss? We do not. Okay. Anybody in the audience wish to comment on anything not already before us? All right, do we have a motion, motion to adjourn? adjourn? Well, <laughs> I think it was Mr. Lilly who was the second. Second. All right, all of those second. in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, let's turn off our mics. We're adjourned. <laughs>